Welcome to Moonshot Radio with your host, Dr. Nivia Torres. Greetings and welcome to Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn. I'm your host, Nivia Torres, Executive Director of the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, also known as KRC. Our vision is that all children in Indian River County will be ready for a kindergarten. We proudly partner with the Moonshot Moment, who is transforming the next generation in Indian River County by having 90% of all students reading on grade level, by the third grade. With me today in the studio is Meredith Egan. Meredith is the Chief Operating Officer of United Way of Indian River County. Meredith, welcome. Hi, Nivia. Thank you for having me. And I should also say you're a Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative Board member. Yes, I am. And I believe you're the board chair of um, Girls on the Run of, tre- of the Treasure Coast, right? Yes. Okay, I got all that right. So Meredith, we're very excited to have you today because I know that United Way recently released a report that gives us a snapshot of communities across Florida. And this report is called Alice. So what is Alice? Well, Alice is how we are renaming the working poor Mm -hmm. across Florida. Um, There are other states that have adopted the Alice term. But in Florida particularly, we're very excited. The newest ALICE data just came out. ALICE stands for Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed. Employed being the really critical word there. So we are talking about people that are actually working, Mm -hmm. that are living above the federal poverty line, but still are hardworking people in our community that cannot make ends meet. Oh, well, that's important to know that distinction. So who comprises Alice? You you said that they're the working poor. So who is part of Alice then? Alice is more people than you realize in our community. Alice, uh, she is your friend, your neighbor. She is your child's child care worker. She's a teacher. She is working hard. She probably handed you your latte this morning. Um, she is the checkout girl at Publix. It's the guy that changes your tires. It's, you know, the the gentleman that comes and cuts your trees down. It's really hardworking people that are still not making ends meet based on the actual cost of living in Indian River County. And that's really the beauty of the Alice Report. We did it in conjunction with Rutgers University up in New Jersey and compiled data about the true cost of living in all counties across Florida. So it's not, you know, the cost of living in Tampa or a metropolitan community or even the cost of living out in Okeechobee. It's true costs for transportation, housing, food, child care, taxes, health care, um, just for our county specifically. And it, it compares every state in, in Florida or every county in Florida. So we know that for a family of four, living in Indian River County, the true cost to make ends meet is really about $54,000. And that's still a very conservative number that's, you know, without travel, without buying new clothes, without going on vacation, um, Christmas gifts, birthday gifts. You know, it's really just the getting to the basics for a family of four with two young children, two working adults, $54,000, which is still a, a, a good income you would We've always, you know, traditionally thought, Mm -hmm. but it's still not making it work for families here in our community. There are two things that I um, I'm struck by your your comment, Meredith. The first one is you really taking the time to describe who is Alice for our listeners and our viewers. I don't think a lot of people realize that these folks, whether it's your gardener, the person at the the retail store, your child's teacher, that these people are really working poor and that your other point, $54,000, is really just to cover the bare essentials. Yeah, absolutely. Bare essentials. So we have about 55,000 households here in Indian River County. And of that 54,000 households, 51% are at the Alice threshold or in poverty. We have about 10, 11% in poverty and about 40% living in the Alice threat, what we call the Alice threshold. So combined half, 51% of our community is struggling. You know, these are these are this there are working people in our community that are employed in what they think are good jobs. They work hard five, seven days a week and they're still not able 
to make things work for their family and they struggle. And that is why, you know, we, we see just a disparity here in Indian River County. When you look at some of the housing costs that have been put into the Alice report, they're really not they're, as I said, they're, con they're conservative estimates. So for a family of four, the rent um, estimate is about $855. And I don't know about you, the last time, mm -hmm. you know, I went searching for housing mm -hmm. to find acceptable housing that you're going to put your children in for 800 and some mm -hmm. dollars a month. It doesn't exist here in Indian River County. Um, a lot of it is due to the seasonal nature of our community. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, these Alice families, a lot of them work in hospitality and tourism in, and tr also true across the state. We have a state that really relies on the tourism as our biggest employer. And so, you know, a seasonal shift can really skew their income for the year. So things like red tide, a late or an early Easter you know, can affect the beachside community immensely. You know, if you're a, a server at a restaurant on the beachside and people can't come there or the season ends early, it really can shift, you know, your, your annual income significantly. Um, people just don't realize that those kind of just a, a two week window of a paycheck is really the only safety net these people have. So it makes it hard for them to project and prepare um, and, and create some sort of savings for any sort of emergency. You know, one flat tire or one sick day can really send them on a downward spiral pretty quick. Meredith, um, if 50 percent of Indian River County now in this recent report is really living in poverty, what were um, the percentages a couple years ago when this report was released? I guess I'm wondering, uh, have we improved? Has it, it gotten uh, So we worse? have fluctuated uh, mm -hmm. a couple uh, over the past couple years. Um, this past report, we've gone up. We were at about 29% uh, of Alice in the last report. And prior to that, we were at 31% of Alice. Um, so this 10% this jump is kind of big for us for such a small community. And again, we kind of attribute that to just the seasonal nature and also the the amount of people really living on the cusp of Alice and poverty. They're just living so paycheck to paycheck that they're right on the edge that maybe the last time we did the report, they had a good year and they didn't, they fell just above that threshold. So they weren't included. And now it's just, we're starting to see a little bit of a change in the economy and, um, We've had a couple seasons, we've had a couple hurricanes, we've just had a, a couple things affect the employment here in Indian River County. So now we've seen a, a big jump for the size of our community. So when you ask yourselves, why do families struggle? And we focus precisely here in Indian River County. Um, do we say it's because of the seasonal nature of some jobs? It's because of the economy. Are there other factors that United Way looks at? Well, I think the biggest thing is really the jobs. It, it's not so much that we need workforce development or skill building. We have a, we have a, we have people that live here that are skilled employees. They we just don't have the jobs to the the stable jobs to match them with. You know, it's really about you know, attracting those larger employers to our community to give people stable mm. jobs throughout the year that are not affected by the season, that aren't affected by tourism. Um, we're always going to be a beachside community. We're always going to need that. Um, that's always going to be the draw to come to Vero. That's what it makes it beautiful and amazing to live here. But we still need some uh, some stability if we want our workforce to be able to be stable. And how do those numbers, the Indian River County numbers, compare to other areas across Florida? So the statewide, we are actually we are actually a higher Alice percentage than the statewide. The state is, sits about forty one percent. So we are actually above average for um, our Alice population, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but we do, um, if you drill down into some of the demographics, um, our demographics do reflect the statewide. So the, really the same amount of seniors living in poverty or in Alice, single moms. Um, we actually know that of the households with children in the home that are in this population, it's about 26% are 
single dads, mm. which is one of the grow growing populations. You know, we often just think of single moms struggling, but one of the fastest growing populations in this Alice group are single dads raising children on their own. Wow, that is that is interesting in comparison to previous years. And, right. Um, is there in, any indication of why um, that is the case, why that is a growing demographic? I think it's just, you know, the stigmas have changed around, mm -hmm. you know, mom always gets the kids. Mm -hmm. So um, if there's a breakup, you know, we have a lot more dads really just fighting for their children and, you know, understanding that the importance of, you know, being in their children's lives. So they're going to do whatever they can. So we're seeing a lot more single dads, you know, show up on these reports as raising children without much help. And the number of households that are Alice now in comparison to previous years, that's also a number that you monitor very closely, correct? Yes, we do. And any particular changes? I mean, you, we certainly, you, you said earlier the percentage, but when you think of Indian River County, um, any any indication of why those changes are occurring? I think, you know, it's really just we are we're learning more about this population. So it's becoming easier to identify them um, and really put a name to the to those faces. Like I said, we don't want to call them the working poor anymore. Mm -hmm. um, we You know, this is United Way across the United Way system. It's a way to give a name and some some value to them. And we know that the importance that they make our community run. You know, they, they are what make our community work better because they are working hard. They're an important part of our community and we need to recognize them and they can't be ignored. So we need to support them in every way possible. Well, and I, I like how you really gave Alice a name, an identity mm -hmm. early on by saying the, this is basically Alice within your community. So when we hear these numbers, Meredith, this is really a great report. But what can we do to help Alice as a community member? I think it's really just uh, the first step is is putting a name to it, giving these families and these individuals an identity, um, acknowledging that they're here and acknowledging that they're important, um, connecting them with services that are available to them. A lot of these families, because they live above the poverty threshold, the federal mm -hmm. designed poverty threshold, they don't qualify for a lot of services. So it's, you know, the, these are not families living on food stamps. These are not families that are able to access those kinds of supports. So it's designing and expanding the supports we do have for these families and recognizing that, you know, a raise or working an overtime shift can kick them out of eligibility for a lot of the things we have in place. So it's really taking a hard look at some of those restrictions we have on programs um, and eligibility and understanding the impact it could have on a family. So, you know, things like the earned income tax credit and connecting families with um, subsidized child care because they are working um, are some of the, the easy solutions. Um, but long term, it's like I said, it's really about sustainable jobs. We have, you know, a workforce here that is willing to work, that wants to work, that has the skills. It's really just about connecting them with the jobs. I have to share you very quickly before we take a break that um, recently a story was shared with me about a mommy who got a dollar pay um, mm -hmm. increase. And because of that dollar, I, and I'm sure you know where I'm going with this, she was going to lose her child care. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, what a punitive measure instead of celebrating the fact that she is progressing and really being she's gainfully employed. She's trying to improve her her condition. Now she could potentially lose child care well she can't work if she doesn't have child care so these right. are conversations we need to have that's the perfect example of an alice story they're just they're so close to being able to make it on their own but yet they're so far because of some of the restrictions that we have on the supports that we we that were put in place to really help them thank you meredith a lot of it good information we're going to take a break to hear from our sponsors and we will be right back at the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, our vision is for every parent, regardless of income or zip code, to have the knowledge and tools they need to raise healthy children that are prepared for kindergarten. Our mission is to support our partners in developing a high-quality early childhood system that is family-centered. Our outreach and parent engagement specialists connect with families and build trusted relationships. KRC has chosen Felsmere and Gifford as our two focus areas in Indian River County. 
Our Felsmere office is located downtown in the city annex, and our new Gifford office is located within Victory Park Apartments. Our administrative offices are now located adjacent to Healthy Start and Treasure Coast Community Health in Vero Beach. The Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, developing a high-quality early childhood system for all children in Indian River County. Everyday activities are great for finding moments for talking and teaching new words. Babies' brains grow 80% in the first 18 months of life. As parents and your baby's first teacher, you can help build their brain with language and literacy skills. Involve the whole family. Ask questions. The more words babies hear, the larger their vocabulary can grow. Support early childhood education by talking, reading, singing, and family engagement. This message has been brought to you by PNC Grow Up Great and the Florida Grade Level Reading Campaign. Seventeen people are dead on the tracks. Where is Governor DeSantis? There are no state regulations for trains going faster than 80, and Virgin Trains will go over 100 miles an hour through our towns. No regulations. The Florida Alliance for Safe Trains is asking you to contact local officials and the governor and say, make them safe. Go to our Facebook page, Florida Alliance for Safe Trains, or our website and get more information. Call the governor today. Painted Frog is a locally owned walk-in paint your own pottery studio in Vero Beach. Create pottery pieces that will capture memories for years to come. They have hundreds of ceramic items to choose from and dozens of colors to paint with. Get creative with glass fusion or clay hand building projects. No matter what your age or skill level, you'll have a great time. The talented staff is waiting to help. Great for birthday parties, showers, team building and more. Painted Frog, downtown Vero Beach, 1906 14th Avenue. There are two qualities of Prosecco, plain and superior. Prosecco is a casual, sweet drinking bubbly. But for champagne occasions, treat yourself to superior Prosecco. San Giuseppe, like top champagnes, San Giuseppe is superior quality, vintage and brut. So make your celebration grand. Serve San Giuseppe. Your friends will thank you. Look for the lily on the lake. Hurry, Joey. I want to get there early to get the best stuff. But we have to go to another garage sale. You do know there's a better way. You can get phenomenal stuff and great deals on almost everything at our Habitat Restore. Hey, isn't that where you got your office desk? Find great stuff at the renovated and expanded Indian River Habitat Restore on US 1, just north of 45th Street. Open Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6. Donations of gently used stuff is always appreciated. Shop, donate, volunteer. Habitat Restore is a nonprofit. We're back to Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn. I'm your host, Nivia Torres, Executive Director of KRC. Joining me today in the studio is Meredith Egan. Meredith is the Chief Operating Officer for United Way of Indian River County. Meredith, welcome back. I'm happy to be here. Meredith, I just want to make sure that folks know we were talking about the Alice Report mm -hmm. earlier. If they want to view the Alice Report or get more information about Alice, how can they access this? Sure. We have an entire uh, part of our website dedicated to all the Alice Reports. So there's, if you're a data nerd, there's a bunch of uh, charts and graphs there. So www.unitedwayirc.org. Excellent. So we're going to switch gears now, Meredith, and talk a little bit about a rock star in the early childhood field that we have visiting Vero Beach next week, Thursday, April the 25th. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Sure. Um, I am very excited. Uh, Mr. David Lawrence is coming to Indian River County for a lunch and learn. So David Lawrence is the previous publisher of the Miami, Miami Herald. Uh, he had a wonderful, successful career in newspaper publishing, journalism, um, traveled the world, you know, covered, you know, every historic event. Um, and then after he decided to retire, his life took a turn and he, with former Governor Jeb Bush, 
really started get getting an interest in early childhood. Mm -hmm. And for a man that had nothing to do with early childhood or understanding or education, aside from having children of his own, um, got very dedicated to the early childhood movement and actually started the organization here in Florida called the Children's Movement of Florida. And he started this wonderful organization that has been an advocacy group all across Florida and is really instrumental in getting voluntary preschool um, for our state, which is we have um, one of the highest percentages of access across the country for four-year-olds to access for uh, pre uh, preschool. Um, and that's really attributed to Mr. Lawrence's work. Um, he's also uh, really well known for the work he did in Miami for their Children's Services Council mm -hmm. to um, get a dedicated uh, taxing district there for children and all the programs in Indi or in Miami. Uh, he recently wrote a book, and that's what he's going to be here to talk about. So we're excited. Oh, well, it sounds very exciting, Meredith. And this is next Thursday, April 25th from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. First Presbyterian Church? Yes. And A Dedicated Life is his book. Why should this be a resource for people in the early childhood education field or anyone who cares about children for that matter, Meredith? I think the core of David Lawrence's message is that um, for a community to thrive, it needs to be about everyone's child. It's not about your child. It's not about my child. It's about or that child over there. If I don't have children, it's about everyone's child because that is the next generation of our workforce that is what going be they are going to be responsible for taking care of us um they are going to be responsible for the future of our economy um so to invest in them is really an investment in our future and in theirs uh so david lawrence you know really just coming and being able to talk to us about the work specifically he did in miami to get dedicated adequate and sustainable funding for children um is really key uh, because it's kind of a turning point here in Indian River County. We're going through that same conversation with some community leaders about, you know, we have a huge need and how do we fund it? You know, do we, philanthropy can't do it alone. We have a wonderfully generous community we here um, that is just phenomenal. It's astounding the amount of philanthropy and the investment that individuals are willing to make in our community and in children but that's not always sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, they may not always be in the position to do, to do that. So how can we, and it can fluctuate from it from year to year. Mm -hmm. So how can we create some adequate and sustainable funding the way they did in Miami and the way that they've done in communities across the state um, to be able to tap into a strong, dedicated funding stream to support the work that we need to do in these children and families' lives? Meredith, and you're so right about the philanthropic community here in Indian River County in Vero Beach. When I first moved here, and I've only lived here for a year and a half, I kept sharing with people to this day how surprising it is to me. I've never seen anything like the giving community here in Vero Beach. Never have never. I seen that. It, I mean, I've, I've worked at a couple United Ways across the country, and there's it's it, everyone says their town is unique and special, but... That aspect of, of Vero in Indian River County is just unparalleled. I mean, we are lucky that we've had some incredibly successful people uh, settle down here and retire mm -hmm. here um, to our benefit because they've had success elsewhere in their lives and they decided to settle here and invest in our community, which is wonderful. Well, that is great to hear that we have that kind of support here in, in Vero Beach and in Indian River County. Um, Meredith, any final thoughts about the event and how we can encourage folks to just show up and, you know, April 25th, go see Dave Lawrence? I just, I, I'm personally so excited. I've met him once. I think it's going to be a fabulous conversation. The interview with him that's going to be hopefully hosted by you, which we're very excited about. Thank you. Is, um, just going to be very interesting to learn about him. He has a fascinating life. Well, thank you, Meredith. And we encourage folks to visit the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative website or go to our Facebook page if they want more information about tickets. And I know you will be there at the event as well. So yes. we look forward to seeing you then. I'm excited. And until next time, this has been Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn.